Okay, moving on here, my next presentation <clears throat> is on Stuff is the Fan Nutrition. Okay? All right, here are my websites, by the way. Uh, again, I said I noticed that it's a survival doc. What you will need to survive and thrive during a prolonged emergency. Destiny comes to those who will listen and fate comes to the rest. I just heard that quote online just a couple of days ago and I said, that's great. I'm going to stick that in there. And this goes along with the principle that I like. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. In other words, if you wait for a disease to occur before you start um, trying to manage it or take care of it, it's a lot, lot harder than it is just to prevent the problem from occurring in the first place. Sneaking on that chest seal to prevent a pneumothorax may prevent you from having to use the chest decompression needle. None of us want to use the chest decompression needle, right? Rather just stick the seal on there. Ounce of prevention is worth the pound of cure. Benjamin Franklin, of course. On this uh, subject of nutrition, uh, a lot of people these days are getting freaked out by um, things that the uh, New World Order or the global government are doing to us, things like chemtrails, adding uh, you know, fluoride to our water, uh, all these poisons and toxins in our food. Uh, a lot of people are freaking out, freaking out about that kind of stuff. And I notice a lot of these people are freaking out. You know, um, the New World Order doesn't really have to poison you because most Americans are doing a fine job of that themselves. All right, here he is, um, smoking, far more hazardous to your health uh, than chemtrails. Uh, it is junk food, uh, super big gulp, corn syrup, and um, all the chemicals and preservatives in these foods. Um, so I just want you to be aware that um, uh, good nutrition is not just about taking supplements. You know, it's the number one step is to just quit poisoning yourself. Because most Americans are, are really guilty of this, in my opinion. So don't worry about Obamacare. <coughs> worry about, I don't care. Okay, if your refrigerator looks like this, okay, you might want to rethink that. And These are all processed foods filled with chemicals, preservatives, artificial flavors, artificial um, preservatives. Um, and the nutrition generally has been removed. When you process a food, generally what you do is you take out the good nutrition. So what you end up with is a lot of empty calories and sugar. And plus, not to mention all the preservatives they add to this. All right. Sodas uh, are a good example. Uh, you complain about fluoride in your water, right? Or if you drink soda. I mean, they make soda out of fluoridated water, right? But fluoride in the soda is probably the least uh, damaging ingredient. You know, probably one of the most uh, damaging ingredients is high fructose corn syrup. But anyway, so uh, again, this goes along with the principle sugar. Um, don't worry about Obamacare. Worry about I don't care. All right, now I want to move on here to um, stocking up for um, survival, okay, for when the uh, stuff hits the fan. All right, we all stock up these great items here, you know, our, our nutritional products, um, medical supplies. And so, you know, I ask you, where do you keep your prepping stock, right? Well, I keep it in my basement, right? Well, so we're all stocking up, saving for, a, we used to call this saving for a rainy day, right? All right, now we call it stocking up. Uh, but one of the, um, what I'm going to introduce here today a con is a concept of you actually store your most important prepping supplies. Where? Anybody want to take a guess? Where's your most important prepper supplies stored? In your brain. Where? In your pantry? Uh, in your nope. Your brain. <laughs> your brain. You know what? That is absolutely right. Okay, information. Information, right? They, they, what you have, the knowledge that you have, learning the combat lifesaver class, learning how to, you know, proper nutrition. Uh, I'm thinking of bones here. This is kind of a giveaway right here. Um, they uh, did a medical uh, study, a uh, long-term medical study, where they found out that young girls, when they're given a calcium supplement, while they're pre, you know, while they're teen, preteens, actually they followed those women when they reached uh, menopausal age, and where osteoporosis is a common problem. <coughs> And they found out that the girls who were given calcium supplements as little girls actually ended up with much less incident of osteoporosis. 
All right, the reason for that is a lot of nutrition is stored in your bones. We think of the bones as static. Uh, the bones are actually living tissue. They're, they're full of blood supply. All right, we know the bones are made of calcium, but they're made of many other minerals too. All right, here, um, here's the, uh, it, this is a spinal, spinal bones. All right, here's uh, osteoporosis, what it looks like. You can see the uh, uh, pattern, spongy, spongy type bone in here. And this is a, a very vascular, this is not empty uh, spaces here. It's all, it's all full of uh, blood and uh, other tissue. Uh, but you store um, not only calcium, but you also store many other minerals. Uh, and you store in your bones, in your liver, in your kidneys, fat cells, your blood, and also in other tissues too. All right, in my opinion, this is where you store your most important, other than the knowledge, where you store your most important uh, prepper <coughs> survival, survival items. And the reason I say that is because most Americans are running around really deficient in a, a lot of essential items, like magnesium. 80% of Americans are deficient in magnesium, and it's because of food processing. When they process food, they remove, magnesium is one of the things they remove. They also remove a lot of the vitamins too, fiber, a lot of them, and that's the reason Again, to go back to a natural, more natural diet. Um, but anyway, magnesium is uh, very important. It's, uh, it's important. It's important for heart health. A lot of um, magnesium is important for muscles and uh, heart. So muscle, a lot of heart problems are due to a magnesium deficiency. Uh, tachycardia, bradycardia, things like that. that. All right, now another concept I want to introduce here is uh, when we talk about nutrition, we're going to talk about nutritional supplements here in a minute, is daily values versus therapeutic values. The daily value is like a recommended daily <coughs> allowance. That's when you pick up a bottle and it says a percentage of the recommended daily allowance that occurs, that, that it contains. All right, versus therapeutic. And to give you an example, here's a scurvy. All right, it takes 100 milligrams. All right, the daily value for vitamin C is 100 milligrams a day, right? All right, what those daily values are based on is what is, it, what is the minimum needed to prevent the vitamin deficiency disease? Scurvy, That's, this is what it takes to prevent scurvy. All right, we know vitamin C has a lot of other benefits besides just preventing the deficiency disease, right? To get a good therapeutic value is actually six grams, which is 6,000. Milligrams. So compare this number right here, 60 times 100 milligrams. All right, so the daily values, you know, when you look at good nutritional supplements, a lot of times you'll see uh, the values are like 1,000% of the recommended daily allowance. You know, that's the reason for that, because those are actually trying to give you a, a good dosage that's going to help you. Now, if I have time here in my presentation, I'm going to talk about United Nations uh, Codex Elementaris. Um, and uh, the, the last few slides I have is on this particular topic. Um, and that is the... Um, the United Nations uh, set down guidelines um, for what nutritional supplements should have, all right? And this is, the United States is a participant in this, and they base that on, on, on minimal values. These are right here. And the countries that are actually uh, adopting these um, values, including Germany is one, all right? They passed these into law, and they're trying to get this, the United Nations is trying to get this passed wor worldwide. And this is something introduced in 1963, and it's something, I've been in the natural health field since the 1980s. It's something we've been fighting, uh, you know, getting this pushed through in the United, in the United States. Um, because if they get through what they want, then it'll be illegal to put more than 100 milligrams in a vitamin C, all right? Which means you get no therapeutic value. It means all of the nutritional supplements are gonna just prevent deficiency diseases. Um, anyway, I put that picture in there. That's what scurvy looks like. Scurvy, of course, is very rare. Uh, but if you um, if you um, stop getting vitamin C entirely, it only takes a month to develop scurvy to this point. Fortunately, vitamin C is in a lot of our foods. All right. Speaking of vitamins, we have two different uh, basic categories. Water soluble vitamins are not stored by the body. These are vitamins that you really need on a daily basis. Your body can only store them for a few hours and maybe a couple of days at most. Vitamin C, the B complex. And by the way, when they process their foods, I said they remove a lot of the uh, nutrients in them. They remove the vitam vitamins. Uh, B is one of them. They remove. It's, it's just removed by removing, like so when they make white flour, you know, they remove the husk or the, the part of the, the, the grain that actually has the most vitamins in it. So you're left with just the starch and a carbohydrate. Um, and, but you, so that's the reason you see enriched vitamins, right? When they first started doing this, 
and, in, and making and selling uh, white rice, white flour, people were coming down with pellagra and all these uh, deficiency diseases due to B vitamins deficiency. So they started enriching. And if you look at your white flour, you look at your uh, white rice, you see it enriched, right? Enriched white flour. Mm -hmm. Look at the label. They all say it. Um, and that's because in the process, and it's taken out like these first three B vitamins. And so they put those back in there and they call it enriched, right? All right, what about the other ones? All right, then it also removes minerals like magnesium and a lot of other things too. Uh, and that's the reason um, enriched rice is not really a solution you should eat, you know, whole grain rice. All right, the other um, uh, category is, is uh, minerals and fat soluble vitamins. These are stored by the body. These A, D, E, K are examples. Macro and trace minerals are stored by the body. The macro minerals, again, are stored by in the bones primarily. Uh, but in addition to the vitamins and minerals, I don't want you know, people to just get hung up on that. Um, there are also many phytonutrients that are naturally in food, and you won't get these uh, generally in a vitamin supplement. Uh, this is just a list of a few. And carotenoids, you know, car carotenoids, what gives a, a carrot is orange flavor, right? There are 600 different car carotenoids in nature. All right, there are, like any of these parenthesis there's like a dozen probably different uh, parenthesis and there's many, many others besides these. All right, in addition, we have enzymes, amino acids, essential oils, and you have beneficial bacteria. Uh, it's important, why it's important to ju not just supplement your diet, but also eat a healthier. You're not going to get these in Coca-Cola. Hmm. All right. Uh, macro minerals are minerals that you need in large quantities, like calcium. You need like 1,000 milligrams of calcium a day. Um, and uh, these, are, uh, these are other macro minerals you need in large. These are some of the main minerals that make up bone. Bone is not just calcium. It's also a magnesium, and it has these other minerals in there. But uh, it, what's also equally important is micro minerals or trace minerals, are like these here, uh, boron. Get away, get away, go away. That's to remind me, I guess, you know, I need to keep moving. Uh, boron, for example, is very important for bone health. If you, if you don't have enough bor trace mineral bor boron, you can't really utilize calcium, no matter how much calcium that you're taking. Vitamin D, of course, is important, and also boron is important to put it. All right, uh, but anyway, these are trace minerals. All right, here's a list of uh, trace minerals and also macro minerals too. All right, these, these are all the minerals that you need, not just the ones that you see in your supplements. All right, why are they important? Uh, minerals, every uh, chemical reaction in your body requires a catalyst. All right, and um, a catalyst generally requires uh, trace minerals. You won't get them here. All right, so the more of this you eat, the more of these you're gonna need, and that is uh, you know, nutritional supplements. All right, these are the nutritional supplements I recommend the most. I've got vitamin D there. Vitamin D is important for your immune system. So you want to get vitamin D from the sun, but in the wintertime, the sun comes in at an angle and it's filtered through the atmosphere. You don't really get enough. Uh, super supplemental is like a multivitamin. contains everything. Vitamin C, and then you do trace minerals I was talking about. Um, and also, this is a liquid form of the trace minerals. And of course, anti-radiation tablets, potassium iodide. Something all preppers should have in case there's a <coughs> nuclear disaster, a nuclear bomb, or something. You want your, um, you want your potassium iodide. That's what all preppers should have this in stock. All right, vitamin C. Uh, what happens when the crap is the fan? You, you can't get your body your vitamins anymore. Of course, so natural sources like rose hips. Um, this is uh, the hip of a rose, and in the winter time, it looks like that on the left. I just took that picture on the left. I took that picture two days ago. That's what they're looking like right now. Actually, I took one right two days ago, too, so they're in various stages. All right, and yes, you can grow your own medicine. Garlic's a great antibiotic. Um, I've uh, had very serious um, infections like uh, pneumonia that I've gotten rid of by taking two cloves of garlic a day, knock it out like in about two days. Just eat it. Just chomp it down. Raw? Yeah, just chomp it down. Yeah, just bite the bullet. Okay. All right. And also, uh, trace trace minerals. Uh, I, re I recommend. Uh, it's not that bad. I recommend um, you supplement your soil, especially here in Missouri. A lot of these trace minerals are not in our soils. This is a product that I add to my soil. I've had it in the garden, till it into the garden. All right, and then also beneficial bacteria. Uh, beneficial bacteria cleans to the roots of your plants and help the roots absorb these trace minerals. This not only helps the, the health of your, your plants, 
you know, your plants will suffer fewer diseases because a lot of diseases they get are actually deficiency diseases for the plants. But also those minerals are absorbed into the plants, so when you eat the plants, you're getting trace minerals. All right, here I was going to talk about Codex element, Alimentarius. Um, and, um, okay, it's 24 minutes. I get 25. <laughs> And so we're not going to go into this. Or this is the USDA's website, U.S. Codex, and it says right here, U.S. Codex, their goal is to comply with Codex Elementary. So if you think <coughs> this is strictly a global thing, uh, you know, and this is a Codex, and I, in this I go over what they say their goal is, and their goal is um, they want to maximum amounts of vitamins and minerals and vitamins and mineral supplements shall be set. Okay, that's what you know the United Nations. Uh, it's Henry Kissinger, the globalist, who said if you control the food supply, you control the people. And to me, that's what Codex is all about. So what I want to leave you with is this right here. Keep calm and start a farm. <laughs> okay, and that's it. Thanks, Zach. You're welcome. Right on time. Yeah. <laughs>